This is a look at a basketball free throw shot by Nate, of course, and Cameron. And the reason that they're doing this is because we want to investigate the motion of an object in free fall. And the object, of course, is the basketball. And we'll see as it travels a parabolic path, sometimes called a trajectory, as the only force acting on the ball once it leaves Nate's hand is the force of gravity. So Nate's going to shoot a free throw while Cameron holds the meter stick for reference of the scale in the same plane so that it's the same distance away from the camera as the basketball. We'll watch the video at normal speed and then we'll open this video in video analysis software and use the software to treat the basketball as an object in motion and give us motion data. So let's first watch the shot of the free throw and then also the shot at center court just for reference at normal speed. So there's the free throw. Of course it's a parabola interrupted by the basket. Now Nate makes the same free throw but at center court. So we'll pause. And now we're in the analysis software. Uh, we're no longer looking at this video as raw data we are using analysis software to treat the ball as if it were the object in motion and by clicking on the ball at what I'll consider the origin of the axis, origin of the motion, and clicking on its new position, each frame of the video will record the motion um, and in this case it's motion distance from the origin in both the Y position and the X position or direction and so we'll have a plot of its motion data by the time we've finished this analysis. I've also slowed the video down to 1 8th speed and so we'll watch the shot from center court at 1 8th speed and see as the data points are plotted both on the video, overlaid on the video, and in the position y position versus x position graph. So as Nate gets ready to shoot the ball, you can see that the coordinate axes, the origin, are way above his head. That's actually the rele release point where he's going to let go of the ball. And at that point, the only force acting on the ball will be the force due to gravity. Nate's hand is still applying a force to the ball, still there. And at that moment, the only force acting on the ball is the force of gravity. And it's the force of gravity that causes that ball to bend down in that parabolic arc until it finally finally recontacts the ground. And so um, we have this data here. Each one of these uh, red crosses represents the position of the ball in each subsequent frame of the video. And you can see that at some points in the, the path, the crosses are closer together right here the, cr the crosses are clustered very close together and then as it gets farther and farther away the data points or crosses are farther and farther apart and that simply represents that as the ball is accelerating it travels a greater distance each video frame and then over here in this graph is literally the plot of the data points Okay, and from this graph we can tell, for example, that if the origin was the point at which Nate released the ball, then the ball traveled more than 1.2 meters above Nate's release point at its maximum. Now we'll go on and we'll have a look at some of the data without the, the video. So here's that same set of position data, Y position and X position, because the ball is moving in two dimensions at this point. And I've fit a quadratic curve. I've done a curve fit here just so that we have this data, which we may later on come take a look at. But this is position data. So let's go have a look at the first derivative of position, which of course is velocity. And I've taken this velocity data and, and noticed that at this point where the velocity is zero, that would correspond to the height, the height, um, the absolute top of the arc of the basketball where it momentarily just for an instant has no upward or downward speed it is 
as if it were hovering in midair and then it begins to fall downwards again but the whole time its velocity is decreasing and until um, it becomes more and more negative and that's because it's in the downward direction but notice what the curve fit here of this data point these data points show us the velocity is negative 9.04 which is pretty close to negative 9.8, not exactly. Let's go on over and have a look at the acceleration data. Now it's noisy data, meaning the data points kind of jump all over the place, but that's because the software is taking the second derivative of the position data. But if we take the mean of this, all these data points of the second derivative of the position data, which is acceleration, you'll notice that we get negative 9.66 meters per second squared. So that is actually reasonably close um, to within some percentage of error uh, to the acceleration due to gravity. And um, we might be able to account for the difference simply by the fact that the basketball does have a certain amount of air drag. We cannot neglect air resistance in this, uh, in this scenario.